um, after Pastor Pierre invited me to come and share um, this morning to you, I believe this the Word of God um, that it's powerful, um, it cuts through bone and marrow, and it pierces the heart. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I don't have a word for for COVID-19. I don't have a word for the vaccine. But one thing I do know is that my God is in control of whatever is happening around about us. And I want you to live in that hope. I mean, we sang that song now that we will not settle for less. But we need to believe what we are saying. Amen. That if we say we're not going to settle for this, then COVID or the, or the vaccine, and I do have respect for doctors and the medical world and all that I do. But God has the final say. Yes. God has the final say. And I want to encourage you this morning as a church, just as an introduction, before we get into the Word of God. The text that we're going to read this morning is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And our key verse that we're going to look at is verses 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And we're going to read from, and we're only going to read verses 15. So if your Bibles are open and if you are going to start reading. Verses 15, we can send off it as we give honor to God's word. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verses 15 in the NIV, what I'm reading. Uh, it might differ, but in your version of your Bible. Um, but it is God's word that I can guarantee you. Verses 15 says, He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Verses 15 again, I want to repeat it. It says, He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And the Lord always blesses the public reading of Holy Scripture. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is powerful. Your word reaches even to the, the lowliest sinner this morning. Your word even pierces the heart of those that are watching live streaming this morning as well on Facebook. Your word is even going across the lens and the breadth, the breadth of this world today. And Father, I pray that by your spirit you will come even now and bless your word. Bless your servant as he has prepared and I pray, Lord, that you will touch each and every one of us as we are standing before you. For indeed, the place that we are standing on is holy ground, and you are here with us. The Bible says that when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are. And I thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst. And Father, I pray that you will bless this time as we look at your word and what you want to say to us as your people. And I bless your holy name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, with much thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Now, as an introduction, um, I think it's only fitting to set the scene uh, for this morning. But this morning I want to present to you, um, this morning, what we are currently facing today as a, as a nation. Um, and what we are particularly facing as, as the Church of Jesus Christ today. I took this peek and the beginning of this year we stood at the threshold of what is happening in our current society, in our nation. 
people were dying, people were losing jobs, people lost security and hope. It all vanished in a moment due to the pandemic. When you put your television on or your radio, you will hear about wars, rumors of wars, human trafficking, etc. For me, it's very depressing watching the news, I must say. Because wherever, whatever you look at, it's about COVID-19 and what's happening and the deaths that are happening around about us. And you can testify to the fact of your family, your very own family members that have gone such through tragedies. But this pic that I wanted to show you uh, this morning um, is actually uh, a Greek from a Greek um, um, methodology or mythology um, talking about uh, the coin's name is called Janus or what we call the the, uh, the month of January. So the one face is looking this way is looking behind him and the other face is looking before him. It's a Roman, it's a Roman god. Uh, that they used to worship. Um, and that coin is very significant because it portrays to us a gateway of what's currently what happened and what is lying before. And in our case we know what that is, uncertainty. But we as God's people need to be aware of the fact that God is in control. This coin also represents the fact of war and peace, youth to young adult or to adulthood. But this morning I would like to present to you in these few moments that try not to look at the negatives around you, but the, sub, the title that I want to present to you this morning is how to confuse your enemy. I know that the devil is real. I know he's alive and well. But he has limited power. God has all the power under heaven. And he knows what his end, what his end looks like. He knows that for a fact. He knows that he'll be bound to the bottomless pit for eternity. When Jesus comes and raptures the church. And when the end comes, that, that's what he knows. That's his destiny. So hell wasn't created for you. Hell wasn't created for me. Hell was created for the devil and his demons. So in the text that we just read, I want to just give you a bit of a context in terms of the book of Chronicles. Now Chronicles is a book largely alluded to the retelling of events recorded in the book of Samuel, in the book of Kings, just, for, just from a different point of view. Now there are two main purposes that governs uh, Israel's history and its monarchy. It also disputes disasters that fell upon Israel and the monarchy at the time. But God still kept His promise to that nation. The writer of Chronicles also looks at Solomon, the king, David, and the achievements, what they achieved in being in charge or looking after God's people. The book of Chronicles also depicts how we ought to worship and how we need to present ourselves in the temple. Oh, sorry, the Israelites had to, how they needed to portray themselves. And also how orderly worship was supposed to be done. And with that we come to this king called Jehoshaphat. In 1 Kings chapter 15 tells us that he was the son of Asa. Now Asa was a good king after Solomon had died. And if a king or a king passes on the successors or the person that's coming to be, in that case, in, in this case, he's uh, Jehoshaphat. God was pleased in what he saw with his father and his forefathers. 
we find that King Joseph has taken over from his father, the guy, oh, King Esser, who dies of a disease. And I'm sure like many mentors that we have today or that we should have with us if you want to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we need to be around people that's of good influence to us. Someone who can lift you up. King Jehoshaphat's name means Yahweh has judged. Now he was a young king at the time, in the time of Israel's history. And he reigned for about 25 years. In verses 31, you will read that in the text that we have just, just read. And because it's such a long text, I didn't want to read all of it, but I'm painting you a picture here this morning. And one of the reasons why he was a good, good king is because of his God that he followed, that he listened to. He had a deep desire to follow the commandments of God. In fact, his father left him a well-oiled nation to govern. And many a times you will see that in his reign, he would travel from city to city to fortify them, but never to forsake how they need to worship God. Now there was always conflict between the northern and the southern kingdom. Um, I think there's another slide that we can just show them. Um, sister. Here we go. So that's Israel over there as you can see. Um, and just to your right hand side you will see um, Ammon and you will see uh, that part in the south here you will see Edom or Moab and Moab, Moab sorry, just, just above that. So there was always conflict between the north and the southern kingdom. And one of the reasons was because of the economic disputes that happened. In fact, sometimes it was so intense because of repercussions of uh, the former king um, a few hundred years earlier. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar and after Solomon had died even worse things lay, lied ahead of them. The southern kingdom contributes uh, or consists of tribes of Judah, Benjamin and thus the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem was its capital. Now Israel eventually was destroyed by the Assyrians in 722 BC. Whereas Judah escaped, Jerusalem eventually falls under the Babylonians um, who took over them in 568, around about 586 BCE. Now normally what will happen, and I don't know if you normally like watching, um, uh, I love watching series like the Vikings and, and you know, they always ask me, Brandon, why do you like watching uh, movies or pictures of war? Um, but just shows you in terms of how people used to live back then. And it was always about land and, you know, I'm going to conquer this king and then I'm going to take over his. You know, so that is the picture that, that, that is before us um, this morning. So that is the background that I wanted to lay before you this morning about King Jehoshaphat. But one thing the Bible says that he appointed judges, priests and Levites because these men had a strong, he had a strong administration and governance over Israel. But now there was a difference between a priest and a Levite, and for that I just want to share with you the difference between what they, what they are, or what they were. Now a priest, he is trained in religious matters, but more so in the law, particularly Jewish law, literature, and traditions. Now in order for you to become a priest, you need to be the son of a priest. You need to be pure of mind and body. Totally consecrated to God. Priests, according to Numbers, in the book of Numbers, you must avoid all impurities. If you are found to have any of them, you will be literally put outside of the city gates. A Levite, however, similar to a priest, however, they had a more specialized field. They purified themselves in the temple 
They made sure that what was happening in the house of God was in order. They maintained the city gates, and they were the and they were the the, uh, the the people that also slaughtered the animals at the time. But my brothers, my sisters, and my friends, not only do we need the Lord's guidance in everything, one of the men that God uses is called. Instead of a J there in the Hebrew alphabet, that's a, that's a Y, so there is no such thing in the a J in the Hebrew alphabet. But in terms of our, our, our understanding today, um, his name was Jehazriel. And his name means that God sees. And he speaks in the assembly before they go to war. And he speaks these words. And sometimes we need men and women like that to speak a message of hope my brothers my sisters and my friends god knows what's happening he is not sidetracked by covid 19 or this pandemic it is not the end and for some it might feel like that but to be absent from this body is to be present with the lord so we should not fear death. Amen. If death comes, it's only that you're going to be with Jesus. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says that you will see Him for who He really is. And you can learn about that in the book of Revelation, Matthew and the other prophets, and particularly in the book of Daniel. If you have time, you can read through that. Today, we have ISIS on the horizon as well. They love their God, what they call Allah, very much that they will do anything for Him. The evil desires of men. <coughs> but for us as blood-washed children of God, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Who is the author and perfecter of our faith. And for that, I want to leave just three things with you this morning. In how you can confuse the enemy. Because the enemy is going around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. And particularly in these last days. He's not worried about those that are, that are, that are lupo. He's not worried about those that are his. But he's, what? he's out to get you. I can promise you that. The devil has a bounty on your life. And if you love the Lord and serve the Lord with all your heart and all your mind, my encouragement to you this morning is to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Trials and tribulations will come. But keep your eyes on Jesus. And one of the ways that you can confuse the enemy is to serve God faithfully. Serve Him wholeheartedly. Read His Word. Spend time in prayer. In fact, your prayer life should, should, should imitate how you are breathing even now listening to me. That's why when I listen to some ministers and they say on the brink of a new year that we need to pray, I sometimes have a question for that because prayer should be almost as natural as what you are breathing. The stage at this time is set again for battle. And normally when you go to war, you will consult the elders. I'm referring back now to, to uh, Chronicles chapter 20 and just to, to unpack for you in terms of how you can serve God faithfully and wholeheartedly. And how Jehoshaphat did that. He consulted the elders because of the experience. Not only in the arts of war, but also how to conduct in how they serve God. Now at this point, Jehoshaphat is under tremendous pressure. Because war is about to come upon them as a nation. The Moabites and the, the Moabites, sorry, and the Ammonites that we just saw on that map over there were one of the largest armies 
that could ever attack Israel. But Jehoshaphat stands up and he addresses the crowd. He addresses the nation. And for those of you that don't know about the, the, the Moabites and the Ammonites, they are actually descendants of Lot's oldest daughter. And they live lives of violence. So you can see you mustn't mess, mess with these guys at all. But a good leader always addresses the nation if he sees there's a problem to bring everybody under his authority and not just his authority but to listen to what God is saying through him. Sometimes in life we need a voice of reason. Sometimes we need someone to speak hope in a hopeless situation and I believe I have come this morning to tell you that this morning the church of Jesus Christ that the battle is not yours but God's you see if you read if you read the account of Jehoshaphat and how he actually defeated the Moabites and the Ammonites it was led by singers or worship leaders and you will see what happens to your response if you worship God that's one of the ways that how you can confuse your enemy not only just to serve God faithfully but sing a song and have a song in your heart because the devil will think, hey, why is my brother and my sister still praising in these times, in these perilous times? Why? Because you are different. You look at the world differently. You see the world differently. Because you have worship in your heart. Number two, how you can confuse your enemy this morning is to prepare for battle. Get ready for battle. This, I promise you, Jehoshaphat didn't stand a chance at all with the army that was about to come and invade Israel for the people of God. He stood no chance whatsoever. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the weapons of warfare. Now in today's terms we don't we don't wear helmets like the Romans used to do. However, we need to keep our mind alert by reading God's word. Coming to the house of the Lord and engaging with God's people. For indeed we are a family of God. We need each other in the times that we are living in. Number three. We need to stand and believe in verses 16 and 17. I want to read it to you in the same chapter that we have just read. This is a Levite that stood up and the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon him to speak to the people in Jerusalem and in Judea. He says, tomorrow march down against them, which is the army. They will be climbing up the path, the path of Jesus. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Jeruel. Verse 7, it says, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. Amen. It's God's word. It's not me saying this this morning. God is with you in your trials that you are facing this morning. The uncertainty about tomorrow. God is with you. In fact, praise is the evidence of faith in your God. And the Bible says when this was happening, 
when the army when the armies came against them it was as if they saw supernatural giants or supernatural agents sorry fighting this war on their behalf in fact the men turned on each other God caused the confusion amongst them and they literally slaughtered each other without Jehoshaphat and his men and his, um, uh, his administrative team um, and those that were ready for war they did nothing, absolutely nothing God caused the confusion Psalm 96 says sing, sing praise, sing songs of praise and this will confuse the enemy because of he wouldn't understand how glad you are in the midst of your circumstances. The Bible talks about a joy unspeakable. It is a joy that the world cannot understand. God makes you glad because you have this hope in Him. And the psalmist David knew this all well. He knew what it was to praise God in times of trouble. And the Bible says that when the war was finished and many of these men, were, in fact all of them were slaughtered in the valley of Baracha, which is also known as the valley of blessings. It's the main road that actually led from Hebron to Jerusalem. Jehoshaphat quote the same saying of David in Psalm 118 verses 1. He says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. The Bible says, it took them three days to collect the spoils of what happened. In fact, that was, how do they say now? Mahala. I mean, can you imagine going to war, you're doing nothing. God confuses the army. They turn on themselves. And it's like, you come out and you look, and you look across this valley. And although it looks like chaos and it looks like turmoil, it is a valley of blessing. They come out and they see this people, the, the, the army destroyed. And they're collecting the spoils. I'm thinking, I mean, I don't know what they had back then, but um, maybe clothes or sandals or something. Um, valuables they had and they collected all of it. it took them three days to collect this can you imagine okay now I, I like I like visuals I'm thinking of a nice sports car maybe you know <laughs> coming out out to my driveway you know and I just see just so it's my car you know <laughs> Yo. but just to put it in play in terms of how we can understand it this morning So sing songs of praise to God and that will confuse the enemy because of what God has done. Now my brother and my sister, tomorrow is going to be Monday. In the beginning I didn't like Mondays because your weekend is already so short and now you still need to go to work on Monday. I'm just being real with you this morning. Okay. I'm just being real with you. Yes, now you must get up early, you go to work, get on the train, get on the get in your car, and you don't even hear God even more. In fact, the Bible says it, it made the noisy neighbors, the surrounding towns, and made them silent. That even stretches to, to Judah. Because they feared God and they saw what God did for them. Without them lifting even a finger. The Bible always has the answers to life. The best book to read, my brother and my sister, is the Bible. It's God's Word to you and to me. And no matter what you're facing in life, this is your manual. But it's more than just a manual for me. It is the very Word and the breath of God. So like in the case of Jehoshaphat, we need to continue to seek the Lord and become part of what He's doing around us. Henry Blackaby writes in his book and he says these words, 
God will never ask you to do something you are not able to do. He will always work in you before He works through you. I'll say it again. God will, sorry, will God ever ask you to do something that you are not able to do? He is always working in you before He works through you. So be encouraged this morning, my brother, my sister, and my friend, as you've listened, and as I've tried to, to just in, 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 these, in these few moments, just to depict to you of that you need not to worry. What must happen, must happen round about us, and I say that really, really respectfully this morning. I know what it's like to lose a loved one. I know that void that it, that, it, that, it, that it has and that what it carries. But one day I have this hope that I will see them again. If they died in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see your loved one again. Because that is our hope that we have as Christians and as believers this morning. That we do not die without hope. But that our hope is secure in Him. Our life is secure in Him. There's a song that we sing from time to time that we have an anchor that holds the soul. Stay fast and sure while the burrows roll. Fastened to a rock that cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. And with that, before I close, I want you just to take a moment this morning as you reflect upon your own life this morning. While your head is bowed and your, and your eyes are closed, this morning I would like my sister to come up and just play that song uh, for me. Um, All to Jesus, I surrender. She can just play it in the background. And that song has become so dear to me as a believer and in my walk with Jesus Christ. I gave my heart to Jesus when I was nine years old. I got baptized at the age of 11. And one thing I can say, I'm 40 years old now. Very proud to say that, by the way. Because one thing, He has never failed me yet. And I can bet my bottom ran on it that God will never forsake you. I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So while you're in this body and your eyes are closed, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're just going to sing that uh, the chorus part of it. I surrender all. I surrender all. The battle is not yours. It is God's. But the, 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 the example that I try to portray, uh, portray to you this morning was set before you this morning through the life of King Jehoshaphat. Maybe we, we become a man like that. That gives his entire life to God and follow God's ways. And as a result of that, God confused the armies. For you sitting here this morning, you might not have hope for tomorrow. For the next few months that lies up until December or even January for the rest of your life.
We thank God for His Word. But if you need prayer this morning, in whatever aspect that may be, I want to remember you in my closing prayer this morning. As you worship God in the splendor of His holiness, if you want, you can come to the front. It doesn't matter. You can raise your hand if you need. If you need prayer this morning. But surrender your life to Jesus this morning. Make Him Lord of your life. Surrender all to Him. Surrender your worries. Surrender your troubles. Surrender that which concerns you this morning. Surrender to God and leave it at the feet of Jesus.